Hey guys, Kyle here, and today I am showing you a version 2 of the Easy Loot Data Pack, aka Loot Database. So, this data pack essentially aims to allow you to edit loot tables in game very easily, very dynamically, without having to do any JSON, just using some chest UI. The original one featured multiple chests and a very giant database uh, storage area of blocks that you had to parse with an armor stand. This one uses data storage to make things easier. That's why I call it loot database. So in order to install this, you're gonna have to go to your .minecraft folder, then your world save you want it in, then the data packs folder that you want it in, and then just drag the .zip into there. There's nothing else you have to do. Just drag the .zip into the data packs folder and you'll be good. Uh, another thing you can do is just when you create the world, you can pick a data pack and pick that data pack. Uh, so this data pack, in order to use it, you just have to do slash reload and you'll see something show up maybe data grant, probably not the loot db data grant imported message, you probably won't see that. Just do slash trigger loot db menu and that will pull up the menu for you. Not too much to see here. There's place UI and export to item. Let's do place UI first. Now if you fly away it will delete the UI so you don't have to worry about non-opt players accessing it uh, if you fly away. So when you first open the loot db UI you're going to be taken to this page. This page is the loot database page that lists all your loot tables you have available. For me, I just have ID of one. For you, you will just see the green stained glass. You won't see this cobweb. Um, so on this, you can use the arrows to change pages. There's up to four pages worth of these loot tables you can make. I can expand that in the future if somebody needs that. It's just a little bit tedious to do and I feel like 105 loot tables is enough, but uh, if you need more, let me know. So then inside here, we can access these loot tables. So let's go ahead and make a loot table in the database, a new one, and it's gonna be a chest plate and you can use uh, custom items and lore if you want better organization, or you can just rename it. So let's just call this chest plate loot table. Oh, we already know it's a, a uh, any chest plate. So this will give you any of the chest plates. So then once we throw this inside here, you put it, you, uh, let me copy this. Don't put it on the black stained glass, right? Put it on the green stained glass and it will put the item there. Uh, now if you need to change this item, you can always just overwrite it just like that. But for now we want this one. Now in addition, it will show the ID in the name. So that's just always gonna be there and it's for your sake. So you know what ID it is of the thing that you're modifying. And you'll need that later when you actually use these loot tables. So. In order to access the loot table, you simply shift click it and it will open up the loot table page. By default, there's just a barrier in the loot table, but you can fill it up with other things. So in the game, in the loot table, the system is a barrier means nothing and then anything else it will pick randomly between how, whatever item is in the loot table. So let me give you an example here. So if there is just a tunic and just a barrier, it will either pick the barrier or the tunic, 50-50 chance, okay? And the barrier, if it picks the barrier, it will give you no items, that's the, that's the convention. So if I throw a chain mail, now there is a one in three chance that I get a, a leather tunic. Now there's a one in four chance, a one in five chance, a one in six chance, and now a one in seven chance. So if I have two of the same item, then there is a two out of however many total items there are, which is eight, chance that you have a iron chest plate. And you can figure out what the odds are of getting each item that way, and you can always just duplicate items. Now, if you put stacked items, like two granite, this only counts as one item, and the thing that you will get will be the stacked variation of it. And of course, this works for custom MBT items. I'm just using default ones for my own sake. But if I put something that's named, it will give you the thing that's named. Okay, so now how do we use this? And also, one thing to note is there are multiple pages for this loot table. Uh, and I have it programmed to let you do up to five pages, starting with the count of zero. So you can put things on other pages for organizational purposes, or if you need more space to fully flesh out the complex loot table uh, that is uh, more balanced odds. If you want something that has a 1% chance, that means you're gonna have to fill up all these pages because there's 105 potential items you can have in the loot table. Do not worry about having more pages and that'll be more laggy. The amount of commands that it takes to process any given loot table is exactly the same regardless of how many items you stuff inside the loot table. So there are no performance issues because I do not perform array cycling. It's a hard-coded binary search tree. 
Uh, so don't worry about having a stuffed loot table and saying, oh man, this one's going to be worse, less efficient than the others. Now, what will be less efficient is the more loot table operations you stuff into one thing. Every loot table obtain or item obtaining method will cause some load. So if I run a thousand loot table gets in one tick, obviously that would be pretty bad. Uh, but it's, it's really well optimized. It's more optimized than the previous version. Now, if you want to actually use this loot table, uh, also, if you click anywhere on the left side, it'll take you back to the main menu. Uh, but if I want to use this loot table, I need to use the loot table that has an ID of two. So what you have to do is you have to give yourself an item. And I like to do a chest, but you can literally do any item. And it needs custom MBT that says loot DB. And then it needs to have an array. The array is the different tables you want to use. So in this case, we just want one table. And the ID is the ID of the table, so two. And the count is how many of that table you want to obtain, which is one. So if I give myself this item, you'll see that I get a iron chest plate. And then if I run it again, it'll just give me different things. At that time, it gave me nothing because it gave me the barrier, which counts as nothing. And it will just give you stuff in a uniform distribution. Now, if you want to obtain more than one at a time, just change the count. So if I change the count to 10, it'll roll the loot table 10 times and give it to me 10 times. Uh, one thing to note is if I go ahead and stuff my inventory full, uh, let me just do three. Okay, so now my inventory is basically full, but I do need one slot to pick up that chest item. But if I go ahead and go into adventure mode and I run it one more time, you're going to see that the items are going to spawn around me. So it does have a protection system so that it spawns items that you aren't able to obtain. So you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine items on the floor right now, including the one that went into my inventory. So there is a protection so that you will not lose your items if you don't have space. Another thing you can do is you can put this item that I just showed you inside of a chest. So if I do slash loot, I don't know, slash item replace, and you could place the block with the item already in it. I'm just doing it like this because it's easier. Uh, container dot with that, okay? And if I put it inside there, it won't do anything, but when I open the chest, it will process it. And there it gave me nothing, but, uh, oh man, we're getting unlucky. There we go, now we got something. So it will also put it in the chest and it will put it in random positions. And again, it will not impact the performance depending on, uh, the loot table's design, it's only gonna impact performance if you do more rolls. So here I'm going to roll the thing 20 times. And as you can see here, it did not overlap and it truly rolled 20 times. So let me go ahead and take away this barrier. And you can see that there is just live editing already inherent, like that, I don't have to press anything. It already updated the database as soon as I change that. So if I go ahead and I roll this, uh, you'll see that it will have exactly 20. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Uh, so it does make sure that no slots will get overlapped, but it does not check the individual <coughs> slots for efficiency purposes. So don't put it inside of a chest and expect it to open up and not overwrite other things that were in that chest. It has to be the first thing that occurs in that chest. It could overwrite other things in the chest. Uh, that's just for efficiency purposes, and I figure that most people using the loot database are not going to be in a situation where they would want to do that, or in a situation where they can't make sure that this is the first thing that happens to the chest. Anyways, all that extra words being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the multiple loots. So I'm going to give myself a second element in the array, and I'll give it a count of one. And this is going to grab from the first loot table. So you'll see I got some sand, which was in the first loot table. So you can grab multiple loot tables with one uh, container if you want to. And the order you do it in will be from the end to the beginning, but I don't think it matters what order you obtain these in. But in case you're wondering if I put a two here and a one here, it'll grab the chest plate first and then the dripstone second or the other loot table second. Because uh, it uh, does reverse order. That's just the most efficient thing. So uh, this is just showing that you don't have to put things up in the top left. You can have empty space on multiple pages if you want, and it still works. Okay, so then the last thing to cover in this is how do you use this in other people's worlds? Let's say, for example, you want to package this loot to database with your data pack, and you want to have this be something that other people can download, or you want to put this in another world 
uh, obviously the data from this chest is world dependent. So how do we get it out of there? You probably already saw this in the very beginning, but if you run the trigger right here and you click export to item, it'll put a chest here and the item will tell you everything you need to do. So you need to copy the item using F3i, then you need to paste it in a ticking uh, function. You specifically need to be in a ticking function or somewhere where this command will be played later or at some point uh, regardless. Uh, a loop uh, load function would not work necessarily. It really depends on the order that things get loaded in. Ideally, put it in a ticking function, but the command you want to do is if score.reloadLootDB matches one, run, and then run the set block and run it at coordinates 1007 to 1007. So if I hit F3i, okay, then I go ahead and I open up one of my data packs. This one is in another world. So let me go ahead and go to this other world really quickly and pull it up for you. So if I go into this data pack, it has a main function. And inside this main function, you can see that I already had one from before, uh, but essentially I just have to run execute if score reload matches one, run set block, and then this ginormous set block command, which will not be inefficient in your data pack because it really will turn into just a score check, one score check every tick. So it's not that bad really. So if you copy and paste the loot data pack, the loot database data pack into your new world and you load the new world with that main function running, it will say loot DB datagram imported if it was successful. So that's pretty much it for this video guys. I have been on break for a really long time. I'm sorry that it's been quite a few weeks, but I've been working on learning some other new things and uh, branching out and having a vacation. Hopefully you guys had a great Christmas break, but Christmas is over. I'm going to be making some version twos of some data packs, uh, maybe some others. Go ahead and join the Discord. The link is in my about page. Join the Discord and let me know if there's any version twos that you particularly want to see coming up soon, uh, or if there's any new things you want me to make. Uh, but anyways, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.